Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Menhaven Colony Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, where we say no matter where you are, or who you are, or where you are in life, in, in life's journey, you are most welcome here. If this is your first time, um, there's a uh, little card in front of you in the pew. If you, uh, you would fill it out. If you uh, have any interest in the church, fill that out and place that in the uh, in the basket of the off uh, <coughs> offering, if you would please. Um, on the bulletins. We have a donation for school supplies that will continue to be received through next Sunday, August the 11th. So please, if you have any questions, check with uh, Tracy Hallman in the back, and she will be able to answer any of your questions. In, uh, in three weeks, on the uh, 25th of August, is Tomato Sunday, where um, we will have a, uh, a bluegrass group local the Tomato Ramblers, I believe that's what they're called. And uh, they put on a good show. So I, I encourage you guys, anybody to come. Um, and also we're gonna have a, uh, a uh, potluck afterwards at the, uh, um, at the hall afterwards. We're going to be having a memorial service for Diane Beasy, celebrating the life of Diane. Will be next Saturday, August 10th at 11. Family has requested that those attending the service wear colorful clothes rather than anything black. If any would like, if anyone would like to assist in the reception following, a sign-up sheet is available at the narthex. Um, also, Women's Fellowship is hosting a reception for Diana. There is a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board for food needed for the reception. Monetary donations will also be accepted. Um, any questions, please see Penny Henderson or Jean Mueller. Um, let's see. Is there a... Uh, Anybody have anybody else have any um, information or anything they want to put out? Prayer for Ellen Carr. Say again. To have cancer. Ellen Carr. Ellen Carr. Okay. And if you would um, be mindful on the uh, names list and on the prayer requests for those that are on the list, and if. Uh, Anybody have any names that you want to add to it? No? Uh, me, me personally, I want to add my sister Nancy. She's sick. She has lupus. She's just going through a real bad time and some other things. So I'm hoping if we can keep her in her prayers, I would really appreciate that. No, that's it. That's it. Um, I invite you to please stand up for the morning's choral intro. And it's supposed, it says it's a rise and shine, but it's been changed to this is the day. standing while we go do the call to worship. We are God's people touched by the Spirit. To feel more deeply and speak more truthfully. To love more extravagantly 
and care more soulfully. To serve more faithfully and encourage more lovingly. To give more lavishly and teach more eloquently. To live more fully and pray more movingly. To participate more fully and sing more urgently. To worship, to worship more deeply and, and more celebrate more joyfully. Bow your heads for this morning's prayer. Loving and gracious God, how often we forget that it is because of you that we live and move and have our being. You made us from dust, from the dust of the earth, and did the most wondrous thing, wondrous of all things. You made us in your image, and you breathed life into us. We thank you today for our lives and pray that you continue to sustain us wherever our journeys may lead us. In this time of worship, make us more aware of your grace and love. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, next is uh, you grab your hymnal, uh, hymn number 56, For the Beauty of the Earth. I think that's a little bit better. That's better. Today, a little bit unusual, we often have communion at the conclusion of our service, and sometimes I feel like that's just tacking something very sacred uh, onto the service. And today I want to lift it up as uh, maybe the focal point of our service, and also for it to be more celebratory. Uh, in my mind, 
in addition to remembering that first evening that Jesus shared communion with his disciples, it's also in anticipation of the culmination of God's kingdom. We stress the inclusivity of the meal, that all are welcome. And ultimately, uh, this describes uh, when the kingdom is fulfilled, all people are gathered around the table. So today, even as part of our communion service, we're going to use our spirit eggs and our hallelujah a little different not just at the conclusion of a children's message, but part of our praise and our worship and our thanksgiving. I want to start off by sharing this uh, passage of scripture from Luke. This follows Jesus' resurrection. And we read that Jesus at the table with two of his disciples took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened. They recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of bread. And further in the Acts of the Apostles, we read that as the church was gathered often in, in the homes of believers, Christians devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and community, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And certainly today, as we participate in communion, we pray that maybe somehow more fully our eyes will be opened more fully to the presence of Christ already in our midst. Friends, as we continue in our service, I invite you to join me in the response of Eucharistic prayer. The God of new beginnings and each new day be with you. Lift up your hearts with gladness. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks for the vastness of God's creation. We give our thanks and praise. Creator God, from whom all life comes forth, here we gather again with bread and the cup, truly seeking your presence, longing for the nourishment that only you can provide. We hunger for wholeness in our lives, for unity on earth, and for peace among the nations. And we know that only in your love can such peace and unity be found. And so with all that we are and all that we can give, we join with all of creation as we stand and sing your praises. Stand. Please have a seat. Friends, we do remember that on the last evening of his life that Jesus met with his disciples for the Jewish Passover meal. And taking bread, he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and blessing it, He shared with his disciples and said, take and drink of this always in remembrance of me. This meal, again, not only point, points to something in the past, nor does it necessarily point to something in the future. It points to something available to us right now. Greater communion with one another 
and greater communion with our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer. As we prepare to share in this open table, may we bow in prayer. Gracious God, we ask that you send your spirit upon us and upon this meal, and that eating and drinking together we might be strengthened in our commitment to do justice, to celebrate creation, and honor the human differences through which your love shines. Bless our communion with strength and purpose, and make us a more compassionate people through the power of your risen Christ in the communion of the Holy Spirit, may you truly bless us now in each day of our lives. In, the, in your holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, if you're celebrating communion with us here at Lynn Haven for the first time, please know that we share an open table. All are welcome to participate. No one is excluded from this meal of love and grace for any reason whatsoever. We are all precious in the eyes of our Creator and all are welcome to our table. I now invite our deacons and others to come and share with us today's communion.
friends, if you would please stand for our prayer of thanksgiving. God of mystery and wonder, we rejoice that you have gathered us at the table of communion and have fed us once again with your forgiving grace. Send us forth with courage renewed, friendship strengthened, to love as we have been loved, to heal as we have been healed. Send us forth with your grace and mercy. Amen. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you all. Will you turn and share the peace with one another? I want to say a personal thanks to Rob Yato, who is playing the organ today. Uh, we appreciate him sharing his gifts and talents with us always. And today for our anthem, we have a very special piece that's going to be uh, shared with us by Dean Englert. What a wonderful world. Thank you, Dean. I was going to uh, say that I think in the many times I've heard you sing that song, that was the first time I've heard you sing it in your voice <laughs> instead of Louis Armstrong. But you got you had to get him in there at the end, didn't you? A little you? bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in a moment, Kevin's going to read our scripture passage for us, but as a kind of a lead-in. I have, uh, I'm going to ask for some audience participation, congregation crazy participation. Foot. And uh, I have two questions for you. If you will answer, what are some of the most pleasing fragrances you have ever smelled in your life? 
Lilies. Yeast rolls. Meatloaf. Yeast rolls. Yeast rolls. <laughs> fresh out of the oven. Yes. I like it. Cinnabons. Hot Cinnabons. Babies. Clean babies. Let's, <laughs> let's specify that there. For me, honeysuckle. Rain. All right. And we could go on and on. Now, I want to flip that a little bit and ask you to uh, and use, please, discretion, uh, some of the most foul odors that you have ever come across. Babies. <laughs> Babies when they're not clean. Burnt baked beans. <laughs> What's that? Burnt baked beans. Oh, yeah. Burnt beans. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trash. <laughs> For me, skunk smell. Now, with those images in mind, good aromas, foul smelling, aromas, or maybe we should say odors. Kevin, will you read our scripture from 2 Corinthians? <laughs> this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 17. When I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, the Lord gave me an opportunity to preach. But I was worried because I couldn't find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. But thank God, who is always leading us through Christ, as if we were in a parade, he releases the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere through us. We smell like the aroma of Christ's offering to God, both to those who are being saved and to those who are on the road to destruction. We smell like a contagious de dead person to those who are dying but we smell like the fountain of life to those who are being saved. Who is qualified for this kind of ministry? We aren't like so many people who hustle the word of God to make a profit. We are speaking through Christ in the presence of God as those who are sincere and as those who are sent from God. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. Within most of our services of worship, I think the most underutilized sense is that of smell. We have so many uh, opportunities to use our other senses uh, within service. Uh, sight, we can enjoy beautiful pyramids that have been created for us in some churches. Uh, they might have stained glass windows. Uh, there's plenty to look at. Uh, sometimes banners, seasonally, a Christmas tree, uh, many, many different things. Probably the most utilized is hearing. Uh, we hear music, we hear sermons, we hear scriptures, we hear prayers. Uh, occasionally, on, especially on communion Sundays, we even have taste. We get to taste the bread. We get to taste the juice. And uh, hopefully every week we have the opportunity to use our sense of touch, whether that's shaking a hand during the passing of the peace or hugging someone. Uh, occasionally throughout the year we might have the imposition of ashes uh, in Lent or anointing oil. But for the most part, we don't have too many opportunities to use our sense of smell. Now, uh, it, that may be different. I know someone mentioned Easter lilies um, when we have uh, our Easter celebration. I know that in one church, uh, they had so many lilies one year, the, uh, the choir was hacking and coughing. Uh, they were overwhelmed by that. 
There was another experience I had where this sense of smell kind of uh, overtook the worshipers back when I was in seminary. Some other students and I, we were experimenting with some different uh, worship traditions. And one particular uh, student, uh, he wanted to introduce uh, incense within the service. Uh, common particularly among Eastern Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. Only I don't think he had much practice. I think you're only supposed to put like a little pinch of the incense into the censure and apparently he just kind of poured it in and when he lit it up there was smoke throughout the congregation and we too were hacking and coughing I'm so surprised that a uh, smoke alarm didn't go off and maybe the sprinkler system didn't kick in. Well, within today's scripture, Paul, he isn't challenging the Christians at Corinth to engage in rituals producing more fragrance. Instead, he describes their lives, and I think, as scripture still speaks to us, Paul is describing our lives as oftentimes being the aroma of Christ. Now, I believe I have this correct if my, my own memory serves me well. I believe that it's been proven that of all the senses the one that can help you revisit memories the quickest is smell. That when you, you come across an aroma or maybe an odor from some previous time in your life, when you smell that again, immediately you will recall that aroma again. And I certainly had that experience uh, one time. In my first parish, I was invited by one of the members to uh, visit his little farm. He had a city home, but he had a little farm where he grew pygmy goats. And he was giving me the tour of the farm. And the moment that we stepped into the barn with the hay, and smelling what pygmy goats do uh, after eating their hay, it immediately transported me back to my childhood where probably once a month we would visit my grandparents' farm. And the, all the cousins, we would play in the barn. And it transported me back to that time. And I think in many ways, that's what Paul is asking us as disciples of Christ, is our actions, the way we conduct our lives. It's like an aroma, and it should instill in the people around us either a memory or a new experience of something very positive, of the grace and the mercy and the love of God. By the way, we infuse our lives with love and forgiveness by the way that we reach out to the forgotten ones and embrace them in community. That is to be our aroma that we emit. Paul also talks about how we have to be careful by our actions because sometimes we don't emit aromas, fragrances, but rather very foul things. Paul describes how some folks emit this Fragrance from death to death, but we are to emit a fragrance of life. I don't know, probably Paul, when he was talking about that 
fragrance of death, he might have been talking about some of those animal sacrifices that occurred in the Jerusalem temple. That was a place of death, of blood, of burning flesh of the animals. Not very worshipful in my mind. And I certainly have not heard of any current churches that are still doing any animal sacrifices. They might be handling snakes, but they are not conducting animal sacrifices. And yet, I think some of you have experienced this in your past. That's why you're here now. You've been in churches where things were stale and dead and stagnant. They were musty and damp and moldy. It was almost stifling to the point that you had to remove yourself from that and find something more life-giving. But we are to emit the aroma of life. Now, I'd like to say that that aroma is always sweet-smelling and perfume-like, but When you think of the life of Jesus, it might be more earthy. He was born in a stable with animals. He walked everywhere. There was no air conditioning. There was probably a lot of body odor among the disciples. And remember, some of those disciples were fishermen. You ever spend a lot of time around fish? You know that odor. And certainly, he even died on a cross full of blood, sweat, and tears. So what might be some of the aromas that we commit? I think it's any time that we we give of ourselves to others. It's when we are full of blood, sweat, and tears as well. To me... The greatest example of the aroma of Christ within a congregation is when it's serving others, providing a meal for the local community, or going on a missions trip to serve others, to maybe mow grass or build a, uh, a ramp for someone, perspiring bodies for the sake of others headed to Nepal. And we still have to arrange a time for you to share your experience with us, Sarah. I just want to say that publicly. (laughs) Sharing of ourselves is the aroma that we give. I want to end with this thought. Another challenge that Paul offers within this text, in a, a different translation, he says, don't be a peddler of this aroma or of this faith. In, in the indicates that you can't take this and bottle, bottle it up and then sell it. It's not something you can package. It's not a commodity that can be traded. And I think a lot of our churches out there need, need to hear this scripture because they do try to create the Christian faith is something so simple and something you just can put it put in a bottle and you can purchase with great ease as if you were ordering something from Amazon. That's an effortless religion. And it attracts a lot of people in today's world. But if we're going to truly transport people into the aroma of Christ. It's going to have to be emitted through us and from us. I pray that whatever our aroma is, that we will truly share the love, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, the compassion of a loving God through each and every word that we speak, through each and every act that we perform in the name of Christ. May we go and be the aroma of Christ 
in today's world. Friends, let us please bow in prayer. Gracious and most loving God, we thank you for the gift of this day and each and every day. We thank you for all of our senses, so miraculous, able to enjoy this earth all of creation and all the abundance laid before us. We pray, Lord, that we will use our senses and use our bodies, use our time and talent for the sake of others, that we will bring healing and wholeness into their lives. And certainly, this world is in need of greater healing greater wholeness. We ask for the healing of individuals, those who are experiencing infirmity of body, mind, or spirit. Give them strength and help them feel your peace and presence that surpasses all understanding. We pray for the conflict with between neighbors, between communities, between ideologies, between nations. And we pray that somehow your reconciling work will begin to erode the walls and the divisions. We pray, Lord, for friends and family we pray for those who are suffering the, the effects of natural disaster, whether it be drought or flood or earthquake. We pray that as a world community, we can come together and offer comfort and assistance. May you continue to bless this congregation, its witness, its ministry, in our community, and as far as we possibly can reach. Gracious God, accept these prayers spoken and unspoken. And as your, your son, Jesus, taught his disciples to pray, we now join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. All that we have and all that we are comes from God. While we can never repay God's gift, we can offer what we can to be the face of God's love in this world today. Sharing our abundance with others through the work of this church and through our mission and service. Please join me now in the giving and receiving of today's offering.
of grace, take these gifts of ours and let them be blessed in your service. Take all the part of our lives we would offer in faithful living and let those and let these too be sanctified and strengthened. May your love grow among us and may we grow in faith lived out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you got grab me a hymnal, um, hymn 602. O Master, let me walk with thee. Friends, as we return to our places of leisure and places of work, may God bless us all and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with kindness and always give us peace. In the name of Christ, amen. God bless. Amen.